Here we'll be looking at the partial sums of series. Suppose you have the series A1 plus A2 plus A3 plus A4 plus A5 and so on. A partial sum is the sum of the first few terms of a series. So for this series here, the first partial sum, which we can write as capital A1, is the sum of the first one terms, which is just A1. The second partial sum, or A2, is the sum of the first two terms, so that's A1 plus A2. The third partial sum is the sum of the first three terms. A4 is the sum of the first four terms, A5 is the sum of the first five terms, and so on. Let's look at a numerical example. For this series, we're adding up the square numbers from 1 to 25. A1 is the sum of the first terms, so that's 1. A2 is 1 plus 4, or 5. A3 is 14. A4 is 30. What's A5, the fifth partial sum for this series? The fifth partial sum is the sum of the first five numbers. So that's 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 16 plus 25. So let's use our calculator to find that out. 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 16 plus 25 equals 55. So the answer is 55. Right, it's 55, the sum of the first five squares. Let's find a formula for partial sums using sigma notation. If you have an infinite series, then the sum, which we're indicating with a capital A, is the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of a k. This expression says to add up all the terms from 1 to infinity. Which of the following is then an expression for the nth partial sum, a n? To find the sum of the infinite series, you add up all the terms from k equals 1 to infinity. But for a partial sum, we're just adding up all the terms from a1 up through a capital N. So we're going to write a similar summation of all the terms a k, but now we're just going from k equals 1 to n. Right, it's just like the expression for summing all the terms, except now we're summing the terms from 1 to n, not infinity. For any series, whether it's a finite series or an infinite series, this is the expression for the nth partial sum. Next, let's put partial sums to work. Let's return to our series that's a sum of all the squares. And now let's say you want to add all the squares from 50 squared to 100 squared. Which of the following is an expression that equals this sum over here in terms of the partial sums of the original series up here? We want to find the sum of the squares from 50 to 100. Let's write them all out. So we have 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared. OK, let's skip a couple. Plus 49 squared plus 50 squared plus 51 squared. Let's skip a few more. Plus 100 squared. OK, so what we want is this sum over here, the 50 squared to the 100 squared. And we can get that by taking all the squares from 1 to 100, which would be the 100th partial sum of this series here, and we could subtract off this part that we don't want from 1 to 49, so that's minus a49. And that'll leave us with just this part, the 50 squared to the 100 squared. So 50 squared plus 51 squared and so on up to 100 squared is equal to a100 minus a49. Right, it's a100, which is the sum of the squares from 1 to 100, minus a49, which is the sum of the squares from 1 to 49. That leaves you with the sum of the squares from 50 to 100, which is equal to this expression here. Can you figure out what this expression is equal to? Remember that the sum of the first n squares is equal to n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6. Yikes! This one looks like a lot of work. Okay, if we want to find a100 minus a49, let's break it up. Let's first find a100, and let's find a49. So a100, using this formula over here, is 100 times 100 plus 1, or 101, times 
2 times 100, which is 200 plus 1, so times 201 over 6. Let's use a calculator to see what that's equal to. 100 times 101 times 201 divided by 6. Okay, 338350. 338350. Okay, now let's find A49. So that'll be 49 times 49 plus 1, which is 50, times 2 times 49 plus 1, that's 99 over 6. Let's see what that's equal to. 49 times 50 times 99 divided by 6. 40,425. So this is equal to 40,425. Okay. Try subtracting these two and see what you get. Excellent. The hundredth partial sum equals 338,350, while the 49th partial sum is 40,425. Their difference is 297,925. And that's the sum of the squares from 50 squared to 100 squared. Sometimes you'll encounter series that are pretty complicated. Here we'll talk about a few ways to simplify them. Let's start things off with an example. Here's the series n plus 2 to the n for n equals 1 to 4. What's the sum of this series? Okay, let's see what the terms are. So let's look at when n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, and n equals 4. So for n equals 1, we have 1 plus 2 to the first, which is 1 plus 2, or 3. When n equals 2, we have 2 plus 2 squared, which is 4, and 4 plus 2 is 6. When n equals 3, we have 3 plus 2 to the third, 2 to the third is 8, 8 plus 3 is 11. And n equals 4 is 4 plus 2 to the fourth, 2 to the fourth is 16, and 16 plus 4 is 20. So try to find the sum of these four terms. Right. If you add up all the terms, you get 40. What happens if we look at the sum of the n terms by themselves and the sum of the 2 to the n terms by themselves? What do they add up to? Alright, so it's pretty similar to what we did last time, but now we do it for two more series. So we have n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4. And here we also have four terms, so n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, n equals 4. Okay, so for this series over here, the first term is, well each term is just n, so it's 1, 2, 3, and 4. And if you add these up, you get 10. And for this series over here, 1 is 2 to the first is 2, 2 squared is 4, 2 to the third is 8, 2 to the fourth is 16. Try adding up these numbers and seeing what you get. Yes, the sum of the n terms is 10, and the sum of the 2 to the n terms is 30. Notice that 10 plus 30 equals the 40 up here. So it turns out that the sum of the series of n plus 2 to the n equals the sum of the series of just the n plus the sum of the series of just the 2 to the n. Now let's see why that is. Let's look at the sum of two series, a n and b n. Over here in the sigma notation, we're not saying for which values of n this sum starts and stops, because it's not important for what we're about to do. You can imagine any starting and stopping points for this sum. Let's consider the first few terms in this sum, and let's call them a1 plus b1, a2 plus b2, and a3 plus b3. We're adding them all together. Since we're adding everything together, we can get rid of the parentheses. And let's also rearrange the terms so that the a's are next to each other and so that the b's are next to each other. So this sum 
looks like the sum of the a's plus the sum of the b's. We can rewrite the sum of the a's in sigma notation, and let's do the same for the b's. So whenever you're adding terms inside the sigma notation, you can separate those terms into their own sums. What do you think is another way to write this sum when you're adding up the differences between the a terms and the b terms? To evaluate this sum, let's do something similar to what we did for this one, which is write out the first few terms and look for a pattern. So this sum is equal to a1 minus b1, now we're adding to that a2 minus b2, and then we're adding to that a3 minus b3. And we keep going. We have two columns here. We have a column where we're adding up all the a's, so that's the sum of all the a terms, and then we're subtracting all the b's. And we can factor out that minus 1, and we're subtracting the sum of all the b's. So this expression is equivalent to this one up here. Exactly. If you write out the first few terms of this series, you can see that it's equal to the sum of the a's minus the sum of the b's. Okay, now suppose you're adding up a series where each term is multiplied by a constant number c. What's an equivalent way to write this series? Let's write out the first few terms again. So this will be equal to c times a1 plus c times a2 plus c times a3, and so on. And each term will have a c in it, so we can factor out all the c's. So this is equal to c times a1 plus a2 plus a3, and so on. So that's equal to c times this expression, which is the sum of all the a's. Right again you can pull the constant out of the sum. Last question. Say you're adding up terms that are the products of a's and b's. How can you rewrite this series? Okay, to evaluate this sum, let's look at the first few terms and try to find a pattern. It's a1b1 plus a2b2 plus a3b3, and so on. Well, this expression down here is definitely not just the sum of the a's plus the sum of the b's. And it's not the sum of the a's minus the sum of the b's. It could be the sum of the a's times the sum of the b's, or it could be none of the above. So let's take a closer look at this third expression here. It's the sum of the a's, which is a1 plus a2 plus a3 and so on, times the sum of the b's, which is b1 plus b2 plus b3 and so on. So if we multiply these two expressions at the top here, the first term we get is a1 times b1, which shows up down here, so that's good. Now let's multiply this first term by this term over here. So we have plus a1b2, and we'll have lots of other terms here. But this second term here, a1b2, shows up nowhere in this bottom expression. So that means that this expression up here and this sum down here are not the same. So that makes it look like none of the above is our choice. In general, if you're adding up products of terms, you'll get a different result if you multiply the sums of the individual terms. So this expression and this product are not equal.